Hello and welcome to Ashland 7's Baseball here on WACA TV in Ashland, HCAM in Hopkinton, or HCAT in Holliston. We are here with the final four action of the MIBL Massachusetts Independent Baseball League tournament, playoff tournament, I should say, as uh, the one seeded Ashland 7s are going to be taking on fourth seeded Quincy today in this first round matchup of the final four. And we'll have the lineups and field for you in just a second. So we've got to recap how Ashland got here exactly. They started in their pod facing off against Kingston, which they won in a four and a half inning mercy. Then they played Walpole, which they won in a five inning mercy. But then they uh, ran into a little bit of trouble with Hyde Park or Parkway on Saturday evening as Parkway took that five to one. But Ashland battled back to win it in, I believe, a three to one victory to secure their spot here tonight against Quincy. On the mound tonight for Ashland, we have Dom Cavanaugh. He's pitched six innings on the season, has no earned runs, and a 1-0 and win-loss record. And for the field, behind the plate, his battery mate is fellow Ashland alum Jackson Hornung. Over at first base, getting the start is Max Dushney. And we have, excuse me, we have Mason Dushney over at second base. We have... Tyler Dossis over at shortstop, who pitched a gem against Parkway on the mound on Sunday. He went the full game. Over at third, we have Shea Donovan. And then from left to right, we have Kevin Balowitz, Sam Farrell, and the ever-reliable Nick Calabrese in right. They're going up against what we assume to be a pretty... Uh, Battle-tested squad in, in Quincy as they uh, secured the win over Milton to get here in the first place, and Milton being Ashland's only regular season loss. And the lineup for Quincy is as follows. Starting off, we have Zach Hatfield, the center fielder. Then we have Harry Peters, the catcher. Steve Parsons, the right fielder. Liam Hines, the third baseman. Mike Dragon, the first baseman. Devin Desmond, the designated hitter. Declan Joyce, the shortstop. Gavin Toland, the second baseman. Dan Ferreira, the left fielder. And on the mound for Quincy, we have Brandon Sullivan. We're almost ready to get things underway here in Quincy. It's a beautiful night for baseball. After a brutal day, heat-wise, things have cooled off enough for these players. And we are under the lights here in Quincy at Adams Field, where the entirety of the Final Four will be played. And coming up to bat, we have Zach Hatfield here. The leadoff. Balls and strikes umpire, of course, behind the mound in accordance with COVID-19 social distancing guidelines. And the first pitch from Kavanaugh. Fouled away behind the backstop. Ashland certainly looking to take an early lead in the standings. And Quincy hoping for the upset here tonight. That's in there for strike two. 0-2 on to Hatfield. We have 11 strikeouts recorded for Kavanaugh on the season. Wind up and the pitch. That's outside, one and two. Quincy coming in as the four seed. Is definitely the underdog in this situation, but if they made it here, they can certainly do what they can as this is hit foul and out of play and it's going to drop on the th just behind the third baseline. So of course, I believe being structured like the pods and the pods were double elimination brackets. So Ashland would have to lose against Quincy or a subsequent opponent and then lose again to be knocked out of the tournament 
wind up in the pitch from Kavanaugh. This has hit a blooper in the air, and it drops just behind Kavanaugh. That's a infield base hit for Zach Hatfield. That was a tough play to make. I'm going to give that a base hit. Blooper right behind Kavanaugh, and leadoff single for Hatfield. That's going to bring up Harry Peters, the catcher. Kavanaugh from the stretch. Takes a look at first base and deals. In there for strike one. Hatfield taking a little bit of a lead off of first, not too large though. Wind up in the pitch. In there for strike two. Quick 0 and 2 count on Peters. Kavanaugh, a pretty fast worker, but maybe not as fast as Tyler Dossis, who barely gives the batter any time to think about the pitch they just took. Wind up in the pitch, and he gets him looking with strike three. One out in the inning. First strikeout of the game, 12th on the season for Kavanaugh. That's going to bring up Steve Parsons, the right fielder. Hatfield still on first. Takes a steal to throw down from Hornung. It is not in time. A beautiful throw down from Hornung. But unfortunately, Mason Dushney was not, or excuse me, that's Dossus over at shortstop, was not there to lay the tag in time. So successful steal for Zach Hatfield. He's certainly speedy. Swinging strike. One and one. On to Parsons. One out in the inning here. Top of the first. We're just getting started here at Adams Field in Quincy. Kavanaugh takes a look at second. This is hit in the air into shallow center field, and that's going to drop for a base hit. Hatfield's going to be held up at third. And runners on the corners with one out for Quincy here. It's going to bring up Liam Hines the third baseman. Spot of trouble early for Kavanaugh here. Fakes a bunt in there for strike one. That would be the aggressive play if Quincy wants the play to run early, would be to try to go for that suicide squeeze, but Ashland is well versed in how to deal with that defensively mainly because they do it all the time. The run down to second and caught in a pickle now is Hatfield. Horning chasing him down and laying the tag down. Lead runner is out at third. Quincy tried to do the, the uh, I guess, classic. Fake a, make a runner go down to second, but also send the runner home when the throw down comes through. Did not work out. Horning was ready for it, and that's two outs on the inning. That is something that Ashland likes to do because they are usually pretty aggressive on the base path. Horning dusts off the plate before taking the next pitch. Is a successful steal for Steve Parsons, though. It's two steals in the game so far for Quincy. Wind up in the pitch from Kavanaugh upstairs. One and one. Two and one, excuse me. That was good plate awareness from Jackson Hornung. He faked the throw down to second. In there for strike two, two and two on to Hines. 
faking the throw down to second to make Hatfield think that the strategy was going to work out okay, but instead getting him caught in a pickle. Lined up in the pitch from Kavanaugh. Fouled behind the backstop. Also a pretty heads-up play from Shea Donovan over at third base. Good communication to uh, tell Hornung that the runner from third was trying to go home. Also playing in on the uh, possible suicide squeeze bunt play. Kavanaugh takes a look at second. Lined up in the pitch. Upstairs, full count. Kavanaugh gets the sign he likes, takes a look at second. Payoff pitch, hit on the ground to Donovan at third base. Throw over to first is in time. Ashland gets out of the inning with no damage done. We're going to head to the bottom of the first here on WACA-TV, HCAM and HCAT. Bottom of the first here in Quincy. Ashland is the home team because they are seated higher, but kind of threw me and my cameraman Tom Hamilton for a loop. I am, of course, am... Connor Donovan on the call for you tonight. Kind of threw us for a loop because we are in Quincy and uh, Quincy is on the third baseline dugout. So we kind of figured they would be the home team, but Ashland is the one seed heading into this final four tournament. So they would get home field advantage, I suppose. Leading off for Ashland is Mason Dushney, the second baseman. He'll be facing Brandon Sullivan as that's up and in for ball one. Get you the Ashland batting order and the Quincy field in just a minute. Dushney has been solid. He sometimes plays in that one spot. More often than not, plays in that one spot for Ashland. So he takes strike one on a swing and a miss. Wind up in the pitch. A heater from Sullivan, one and two. Dushney steps back in. Wind up in the pitch from Sullivan. And this is hit to shallow center field. That's going to get down for a base hit. Lead off single for Mason Dushney. Dushney not exactly a threat to steal, I'm told, because he is still dealing with a some sort of leg injury, or he was the last time we checked in with him. That's going to bring up Sam Farrell, the center fielder. Wind up in the pitch. That's in there for strike one. Rest of the batting order goes Jackson Hornung, the catcher in the three spot. Dominic Cavanaugh in the cleanup. Tyler Dossis, the shortstop in the five spot. Kevin Balowitz, the left fielder. Shea Donovan, the third baseman as that's in there for a ball. Max Dushney, the first baseman, and Nick Calabrese, the right fielder in that nine spot. We'll talk a little bit more about him when he comes up because we can't say enough nice things about Nick Calabrese. Sullivan takes a look at first. The one and one to Farrell. Another heater down the middle for strike two. Sullivan gets the sign. Checked in at first. Runner is back safe. That was more of a dive than a slide from Dushney there. Nice move from Sullivan. Checks in again. But as they say, never a third in terms of checking in a third time over at first base. Dushney taking another lead, and he does check in a third time. Dushney back safe yet again. The chirping we're all used to from the Ashland bench coming through. Sullivan steps off the mound. And Farrell steps out of the box, but 
steps back in, facing a one and two count. Just upstairs. If there was a good miss, that was a good miss from Brandon Sullivan. Two and two to Farrell. Hit on the ground, third base side, bobbled by the third baseman, and the throw is not gonna come through at all. Gotta rule that an error onto Liam Hines. So Sam Farrell reaching on an error, Dushney up to second. It's gonna bring up Jackson Hornung. Sullivan takes a look at second and deals. This is hit right to the second baseman. And Dushney is caught off. That's going to be a double play. A four unassisted double play. Quick two outs for Ashland here, and that's going to bring up Dom Cavanaugh. Unfortunate luck for Dom Cavanaugh, or excuse me, for Hornung. Checks in at first, runner is back safe. Keeps checking in at first, and he might get Dushni with that, but he's certainly not gonna get Sam Farrell. Dom Cavanaugh has one home run, 22 RBIs, 12 runs scored as Sam Farrell takes off for second. That's going to get down into left field. Farrell's going for three. Ooh, he would have had it if Hines made the catch on that. That was a beautiful throw in from the left fielder of Quincy. But Hines couldn't handle the throw. And Farrell gets down there on the advance. A two out base hit for Dom Cavanaugh is going to bring up Tyler Dossis. Dossis batting a 346 on the season with a 43, 435 on base percentage. He takes ball one. Dossis has 15 RBIs and 16 runs scored on the season. He takes ball two. Sam Farrell definitely a threat to steal on a pass ball or a wild pitch here. This is hit in the air, foul territory, first base side, and out of play. The field for Quincy tonight, we have, of course, Brandon Sullivan on the mound, Harry Peters behind the plate, Mike Dragon at first base, Gavin Toland over at second, Declan Joyce at shortstop, Liam Hines at third, then from left to right we have Dan Ferreira, Zach Hatfield and Steve Parsons. Wind up in the pitch. This is hit up the middle and it's gonna split the gap into right field. One run is gonna score for Ashland and Kavanaugh's gonna make his way over to third. A, an RBI base hit for Tyler Dossis. That run is going to be unearned for Sullivan. Kavanaugh showing off the wheels. And a beautiful hit from Tyler Dossis. That is the third hit of the inning for Ashland. And Ashland takes a one to nothing lead here in the bottom of the first. It's gonna bring up Kevin Balowitz as he takes one in the dirt for ball one.
Runners on the corners with two outs for Quincy here. Quincy got those two outs because of a four unassisted double play. Jackson Hornung flew out and then a quick tap on the bag because Dushney was caught off the bag, not tagging. It was a good play from the second baseman, Gavin Toland, for Quincy. One and one to Kevin Balowitz. Dossus tried to take off for second, but he faked it. No throw down to first, and he's going to get back safe. Two and one, two Balowitz here. Ashland already played it a run in the inning. And in a pretty good position to plate some more. And Dossus just takes a healthy jog down to second base. Sullivan was not ready for that, but I think they were trying to draw a balk or something like that. But he just absolutely <laughs> jogged down to second base. Wind up in the pitch from Sullivan, swinging strike for Balowitz. Makes it two and two with two outs. Two runners in scoring position for Ashland. So a base hit would score at least another run here. And Ashland has been finding the gaps. This is hit on the ground to the third baseman. Throw over to first is in time. Good play from Liam Hines there to wrap up the inning. Ashland's going to strand two, but not before plating one. As they have a 1-0 lead, we're going to head into the top of the second. 5, 6, and 7 due up for Quincy here in the top of the second. We have Mike Dragon, the first baseman, up to bat. Quincy with two hits on the game so far. So that's in there for strike one. So the bats are not cold for Quincy. They've just ran into some unfortunate uh, base running, I suppose. Zach Hatfield caught in a pickle at third base last inning as that's down low for ball one. The one and one to Mike Dragon. This is hit in the air, right field side. Ranging over, foul territory making the catch is Nick Calabrese for out number one. That's going to bring up Devin Desmond, the designated hitter. Top of the second here, Ashland with a 1 0 lead, swinging strike one from Desmond. Ashland plated a run last inning, Sam Farrell. That's quick strike two onto Desmond. Sam Farrell managed to make it to third off of a shallow base hit into left field. Showing off the wheels there and managed to score. Caught the outside corner for ball one there. One and two. In the dirt, two and two. Ashland had a pretty stellar defensive game in their second outing against Parkway on Sunday, but kind of sloppy defensively as that almost hit Desmond. Going to fill up the count. They were kind of sloppy defensively in their first outing last Saturday night against Parkway, making a lot of errors in the infield they don't normally make on top of Hyde Park capitalizing off of some excellent base running. Desmond calls time on the full count. One out in the top of the second. Ashland, of course, the home team being the one seed. In the dirt, swinging strike three, but throw down to first is no problem for Hornung. 
Two outs on the inning for Quincy. Going to bring up Declan Joyce, the shortstop. Kavanaugh has been dealing tonight already with two strikeouts. So that's just down low for ball one. Hornung tried to frame that pitch but was unsuccessful in doing so. Up high from Kavanaugh, 2-0. because Kavanaugh's on the mound and Horning is behind the plate as he has been for the latter half of playoff games. The infield rotation gets a little bit messed up as this is hit behind us. Foul. One and one on to Declan Joyce. But we have Kavanaugh in the regular season, usually playing first base, as this is blooped to shallow left field. And it's going to get down there for a base hit. A two-out base hit from Declan Joyce. Those bloopers have been killing Ashland's shallow, shallow outfield and even infield. This, the leadoff hit from Zach Hartfield was a blooper that went just behind the pitcher's mound, and Kavanaugh couldn't make a play on it. Swinging strike from Gavin Toland. 0-1. But it's a pretty big field here in Quincy, so these Ashland outfielders playing a little bit out. They don't really have a ton of information, nor is Obed really signaling them to come in at all. So that's how these hits are getting down. Oh, and that hit him. That looked like it hurt. First hit batter of the season for Kavanaugh. That's going to put Declan Joyce on to second. Gavin Toland going to move to first on the hit by pitch. It's going to bring up Dan Ferreira. Ferrara, excuse me. Two outs first and second for Quincy here. Kavanaugh steps off the mound and is now working from the stretch. Takes a look at second. And deals. Foul tip for strike one. in the dirt, but Horning recovers. No one will advance. One and one onto Ferrara. Kavanaugh from the stretch. He deals. This is hit in the air, third base side. Donovan calling off the shortstop and making the catch for out number three. A fly out from Dan Ferrara is going to put an end to the top of the second. Ashland still maintaining a one to nothing lead, but the bats are going on both sides as we head to the bottom of the second. Bottom of the second here in Quincy. Ashland with a one to nothing lead over Quincy. And seven, eight, and nine do up. Shea Donovan, Max Dushney, and Nick Calabrese for Ashland. Ashland, of course, coached by Jake Obed in his second year. Done a fantastic job with the organization. So that's in there for strike one onto Donovan. Donovan, the perennial third baseman for this Ashland 7 squad. Usually has a pretty 
good eye for what to do over at third base in terms of coming in on a bunt or he's already made two pretty large plays in this game putting a runner trying to steal home in a pickle and of course ending the inning in the top of the second with a routine fly out two and one on to Donovan now wind up in the pitch from Sullivan that's in there for strike number two two and two This is hit on the ground to the third baseman. Takes a nasty hop, but well fielded by Liam Hines. A tough play to make, but he still got him. One out in the inning. It's going to bring up Max Dushney, the first baseman. This is hit in the air, first base side, and caught. Quick two outs in the inning for Nick Calabrese. But if there's something that Nick Calabrese knows how to do, it's hit balls with two outs. I'll read you Nick Calabrese's stats because they're ridiculous. Nick Calabrese has 15 RBIs, 16 runs as he takes strike one. But he has a 551 base average, uh, excuse me, batting average, and a five, uh, .59 on base percentage. Those numbers have dropped a little bit from what they were in the regular season. He was batting above 600 and on base above 600 during the regular season, but still one of the most efficient guys Ashland has on their squad in the nine spot. Owen oh, two onto Calabrese. Swinging strike three and a one, two, three inning for Quincy. It's a lot of momentum on their side as we're gonna head to the top of the third. Ashland still with a one nothing lead here on WACA-TV, HCAM in Hopkinton, and HCAT in Holliston. Top of the order due up for Quincy in this top of the third. Ashland still with a one to nothing lead. And Kavanaugh out there for another, you know, another inning of work facing Zach Hatfield, who reached on a blooper just past Kavanaugh. So this has hit foul on the third base side. Almost tagged the third base coach for Quincy. Oh and one on Hatfield. Breaking pitch just outside. One and one. Kavanaugh gets the sign and deals. Foul behind the backstop. One and two. He built a lot of momentum in that 1-2-3 inning in the bottom of the second. Brandon Sullivan recording his first strikeout of the night. This is fouled again. The battle continues between Kavanaugh and the leadoff man, Hatfield. Wind up in the pitch from Kavanaugh in the dirt for ball two. Hatfield also a speedy base runner as we've seen. Definitely a liability to have. He got him on the inside corner for strike three, one out. I should say definitely a liability for Ashland's 
chances to keep this game at a 1-0 lead, but Kavanaugh shut me up with his third strikeout of the day. That's going to bring up Harry Peters, who struck out in his last at-bat. A heater for strike one. Wind up in the pitch. Upstairs, ball one. One out in the inning for Ashland in this top of the third game. Moving right along here and has certainly cooled down from what it was earlier today as this is hit and it's going to be fielded by Dushney. Throw over to first. A great play from Mason Dushney. I thought that was going to get by him every day of the week, but he backed up and followed the ball and made the play on it just before it hit the right field line. Right field grass, I should say. Four to three ground out for Harry Peters. It's going to bring up Steve Parsons with two outs. Parsons reached on a single and stole second in the first. Down the middle for strike one. Wind up in the pitch from Kavanaugh. Bounced off home plate behind the backstop. One and one. If I'm Coach Obit, I would probably be expecting Kavanaugh to go the full game here. This is before he runs into any trouble, of course. He starts, this is hit to the first baseman. Fielded by Max Dushney. And Parsons tripped over first base, it looked like, but the flip to Kavanaugh was in time. The cover from the pitcher was there, and there Quincy is going to go down one, two, three as we head into the bottom of the third. Top of the order for Ashland as we enter the bottom of the third, still with a one to nothing lead, Ashland has. But just like Quincy, Ashland gonna lead off with their one, two, three. Mason Dushney to the plate. In there for strike one. Dushney reached on a base hit in the first, but then was part of an unfortunate double play where Jackson Hornung hit into a, hit the ball right to the second baseman and a nice play from Gavin Toland. Dushney was caught out right in the middle of the base path and it was an easy step on the bag for Gavin Toland. Wind up in the pitch. Foul tipped but caught by the catcher for strike three. One down for Ashland. Harry Peters behind the plate holding on to that making sure the strikeout gets recorded. It's going to ring up Sam Farrell who reached on an error and recorded the only run of the game so far, back in the first. You want to talk about bad guys to have on base if you're Quincy. Sam Farrell is that exactly as this is hit to the second baseman, fielded, and throw over to first is in time. Gavin Toland has been lights out in second base in that position. Four to three ground out for Sam Farrell. But yeah, if you get Sam Farrell on base, best believe that he's going to use his wheels and he's probably going to get at least a bag off of a steal. Probably two. That's going to bring up Jackson Hornung, who flew out into that double play I told you about earlier, and there for strike one. Hornung has been one of the perennial sluggers on this Ashland squad, batting a 435 with a 554 on base percentage. Horning has three home runs on the season, has 21 RBIs and 28 runs. This is hit in the air, high to the left field side, ranging over and making the catch successfully is Dan Ferrara. Ashland going down one, two, three yet again as we're going to head to the top of the fourth. 
Still holding a 1-0 lead is Ashland. And we'll talk to you then. 4, 5, and 6 due up for Quincy. Ashland still with a 1-0 lead in the top of the fourth. Kavanaugh out for his fourth inning of work. Already has three strikeouts on the day to add to his 11 that he has had previously in the season. Wind up in the pitch to Liam Hines, and he takes strike one. Hines over one on the day, grounded out back in the first to end the inning. This is hit in the air and caught by Dushney. Another scary little blooper from this Quincy team who that seems to be their main avenue of attack is these like bloopers either to the infield grass or to the shallow outfield grass. And it's working for them. They have three hits in the game so far. That's going to bring up Mike Dragon, who flew out to right field. And his first at bat, and that's going to split the gap. Donovan couldn't get down there to make the play. And a one-out base hit for Mike Dragon. The fourth hit of the game for Quincy. It's going to bring up Devin Desmond, who struck out in his last at bat. Kavanaugh takes a look at first. Hasn't really shown off his move. Tries for a bunt, throws back to first, and caught in a pickle again is Quincy. And he laid the tag down. Again, some, I want to say, sloppy base running from Quincy. Another runner caught in a pickle, but also a gorgeous throw down to first from Hornung. Hornung is well seasoned behind the plate. A tough guy to get a steal on which is why it was notable when Zach Hatfield did back in the first. But a quick two outs as Dragon is caught stealing. And a quick 0-2 count onto Desmond, the designated hitter. Down low for ball one, one and two. Swinging strike three, but in the dirt. Throw down from Hornung is in time. And Quincy going to go down technically one, two, three, even though there was a hit mixed in there somewhere. But we're going to head to the bottom of the fourth. Ashland still maintaining that one to nothing lead. Bottom of the fourth here. Four, five, and six due up for Ashland. Dominic Cavanaugh to the plate who reached on a single back in the first and was left on base. Takes ball one down low. Brandon Sullivan been pitching a pretty good game as that's a heater down the middle. One and one. Line up in the pitch from Sullivan in the dirt. Two and one. This game is cruising by in the bottom of the fourth. Ashland still holding on to that one run they plated back in the first. Swinging strike. Two and two. Down low, it's going to fill up the count on Kavanaugh. Two strikeouts on the day for Sullivan. Can he make it a third? Wind up in the pitch. And swinging strike three. Throw down to first is a little off the mark, but still fielded by Dragon. Third strikeout of the day for Sullivan. One out, going to bring up Tyler Dossis. 
who has an RBI for the only run that is scored today. This is hit in the air, right field side, ranging over and not making the catch. This is deep into right field. Dossus might go for three, but he's held at second. Good cut from the right fielder. A massive slam from Tyler Dossus. He's two for two on the day. A massive two for two, I should say. A one out double for Dossus. It's gonna bring up Kevin Balowitz. Doss is a threat to steal also. At the plate, we have Kevin Balowitz. Balowitz, 15 RBIs, 16 runs. Batting a 263 with a 333 on base percentage. He takes strike number one. Sullivan looks at second and deals outside for ball two. Or excuse me, ball one. Swinging strike, one and two onto Balowitz. Ashland. Hasn't had a base runner in two innings other than Dossus right now. So if they're able to capitalize, Balowitz swinging strike three, but falls out of the glove of Harry Peters, but he's able to lay the tag before Balowitz starts down to first. Second strikeout of the inning. Fourth strikeout overall for Sullivan as he seems to be heating up a little bit. It's going to bring up Shea Donovan. He's 0 for 1 on the day, grounded out back in the second. Takes ball one. Still has Dossus over at second. But two outs in the inning in this bottom of the fourth. Ashland holding on to a 1 to nothing lead as the defense has been spectacular from both teams. Two and zero on to Donovan. Outside three and zero, called ball from the behind the mound umpire. <laughs> Takes the the uh, expected strike one. Donovan does. Dossus with a pretty big lead over at second. And takes upstairs ball four. Umpire didn't like it. That's going to put two on first and second with two outs for Max Dushney. First walk on the day for Sullivan. Up and in for Sullivan. Ball one on to Max Dushney. Wind up in the pitch, fouled behind the backstop. Even up the count at one and one. A little bit surprised we haven't seen any steals from Dossus. Obed does like to have a runner on third to put pressure on the pitcher, usually. 
Maybe even taking a thing or two from that Hyde Park game where the runner on third for Parkway definitely psyched out Ashland's pitcher Dylan Fonseca into putting forth a balk as that's a beautiful breaking pitch for strike two. Wind up in the pitch. He got him with strike three. Hit the outside corner, and that's going to retire the inning. Sullivan gets out of a jam. Ashland leaves two on base, but still holding a one to nothing lead as we head to the top of the fifth on WACA TV in Ashland, HCAM in Hopkinton, and HCAT in Holliston. Top of the fifth for Quincy. Kavanaugh still out there. He has recorded four strikeouts on the day. But Sullivan, the pitcher for Quincy, heating up as he recorded three strikeouts just last inning to put five on the day for him. As Declan Joyce, the shortstop, takes strike one. Foul behind the backstop for a quick two strikes. Kavanaugh usually likes to get up in the count, really high up in the count, pretty early. So he's a lot of room to work with. <laughs> At least that's what we've seen today in Quincy. Wind up in the pitch from Kavanaugh. This is hit in the air, center field, and ranging over and making the catch no problem is going to be Sam Farrell. One out in the inning for Quincy. It's going to bring up Gavin Tolan, the second baseman, who's had a stellar day defensively. He was also hit by a pitch back in the second. This is hit foul. This game has not had a whole lot of base runners on either side. So that's going to catch the bottom of the strike zone for strike two. This is what we say when we like, we say that Kavanaugh likes to get up in the count early. Wind up in the pitch, in the dirt for ball one. One two pitch to Toland. This is hit on the ground up the middle, and that's going to get in there for a base hit. One out base hit for Gavin Toland is going to bring up Dan Ferrara, who flew out in his last at bat. Quincy has not been shy with the bats today, they have five hits on the day just have run into a spot of trouble with their base running. Kavanaugh from the stretch, steps off the mound, takes a look at first. And he deals. Downstairs for ball one. Ferrara, the left fielder. Foul behind the backstop, one and one. Kavanaugh still really, has, still really hasn't shown his move to first base, his pickoff move, I should say. But he hasn't had a whole lot of base runners. And he did go, but it got away from Hornung. Throw down to second. and. Kind of desperation, but no damage done. One and two, the count onto Ferrara, but a stolen base on a pass ball. It's going to put Toland at second.
Kavanaugh looks at second and deals. In there for strike three. Ferrara goes down by way of the K. That's going to bring up the top of the order in Zach Hatfield. One for two on the day. Coach Obed coming out to talk to Kavanaugh. Maybe a little fearful of this Quincy base runner over at second base. Toland has shown himself to be pretty speedy on the base path. So Obed may be coming up with a counter strat. Let's try to get this final out if Quincy decides to do some, some base running. Zach Hatfield to the plate. Two outs on the inning. Ashland still with a one to nothing lead here in this top of the fifth. Kavanaugh looks at second and deals. Hit on the ground. And that's going to split the middle. The runner being sent around and Tolan the throw home was cut off. And it is a tied game, one to one. Quincy plates a run with an RBI double from Zach Hatfield. He's been a nuisance for Ashland today. It's going to bring up Harry Peters, 0 for 2 on the day. It's pretty big for Quincy now. The onus is on Ashland to play another run. They are, of course, the home team, so... less large of an onus as you might be led to believe, but even still, this game has not seen a lot of base runners, so that is a big deal, especially since we still have Hatfield over at second base. Foul tipped for strike two. Quick two strikes onto Peters with two outs in the inning. Kavanaugh looking to get out of this with no further damage done, but this game it's been interesting all night, but just got a little bit more interesting. The 0-2 from Kavanaugh. This is hit to Donovan. Easy throw over to first base, and he got him. 5-3 to three to end the inning, but not before Quincy plates a run. We're going to head to the bottom of the fifth and see if Ashland can retaliate here on WACA TV in Ashland, HCAM in Hopkinton, and HCAT in Holliston. Bottom of the fifth here. Quincy did play to run last inning, so it is tied at one. And this game is pretty interesting from a stat line perspective. Ashland with four hits to Quincy's five. Quincy has one error to Ashland's none, but they have the same amount of left on base runners in four and the same amount of walks in one, and of course the same amount of runs in one. So this game is pretty evenly matched. As Nick Calabrese going to step to the plate, the nine hitter for Ashland. And it has turned into quite a pitching duel as that, that is outside for ball one. Brandon Sullivan and Dom Kavanaugh both with five strikeouts on the day. Sullivan with a walk. Kavanaugh with a hit batter. This is hit by us. Foul. One and one to Calabrese. Only difference in the pitchers thus far is this is again hit towards us. Calabrese the lefty. So we should be expecting pitches or uh, hits this way. Only difference between Kavanaugh and Sullivan thus far. Looks like his Sullivan's run was earned and he did go. Strike three. Calabrese having a rough day at the plate. Over two with two strikeouts. But Sullivan is heating up. Six on the day. Four in the last two innings. It's going to bring up top of the order in Mason Dushney. As I was saying, the only difference being that 
Sullivan's run was unearned and Kavanaugh's run was earned. One and one on to Mason Dushney. Wind up in the pitch upstairs for ball two. Certainly been a battle between Brandon Sullivan and Dom Kavanaugh here. Didn't start out that way as the bats have been pretty steadily going, but Sullivan has just lit up this Ashland batting order. And Ashland hasn't had a ton of response. They've only had two base runners. Oof. Mason Dushley thought he had ball four there, but instead the count's going to fill up with one out. Ashland's only had two base runners in the last three innings. Wind up in the pitch, this is hit foul. Dushney staying alive. Dushney needs one for two on the day. Wind up in the pitch from Sullivan. That's in there for strike three, a breaking pitch. Caught Dushney looking. Two strikeouts in the inning yet again for Sullivan. Had three, completely retired the side with strikeouts last inning and on pace to do the same as Sam Farrell steps in. He's 0 for 2. He reached on an error back in the first. And the only run scored for Ashland as well is Sam Farrell back in the first. So he fouls that away for strike one. Two outs in the inning in this bottom of the fifth. Quincy building some momentum here. Wind up in the pitch. Hit in the air, first base side out of play. 0-2 on to Sam Farrell. Wind up in the pitch from Sullivan. Ooh, breaking pitch. Ump didn't like it. One and two on to Farrell. Wind up in the pitch. Farrell staying alive here. Still one and two with a couple of foul balls. It's been a five pitch at bat. Ashland needs some base runners. And they need them pretty quick if they're going to try to break this Quincy momentum here. Pitch from Sullivan. That hit him. Sullivan thought he leaned into it. But Farrell draws the walk in any case. That's a rough look for Quincy Farrell, or uh, excuse me, Sullivan was way up in the count on that. That's going to bring up Jackson Hornung, someone you don't want to see at the plate right now. It's Harry Peters going to have a quick talk with Sullivan. As I said before, back in the third, Farrell is not someone you want to have on base if you're Quincy. This guy can fly. Horning to the plate. He's over 2 on the day, but 
That hasn't stopped him from making some huge plays before as he takes strike one. Coach Obed giving Farrell a sign. Checking it first, runners back safe. Sullivan gets the sign he likes, checks in at first yet again. Runner is back safe. Warning to the plate. If there's anyone who can get this Ashland bench jazzed up, it is Hornung, slow roller to the shortstop on the ground out of the first baseman's glove. And Farrell's going to take off for third. That was a routine six to three, but Hornung is still looking pretty beat up on the uh, first base path. Might have turned an ankle or something of the sort stepping on first base. He looks to be all right. So he's making his way over to first. I'm going to rule that an error as it was well fielded by the shortstop Declan Joyce for Quincy, but just the throw over and popped out of the first baseman, Mike Dragon's glove. Uh, but the, the big damage there was Sam Farrell speeding his way over to third base off of that base hit from Hornung. How about the wheels from Hornung to beat out that play and keep this inning alive for Ashland? That's going to bring up Dom Cavanaugh. Cavanaugh one for two on the day, but also definitively somebody you don't want at bat right now. This part of the lineup is dangerous for any team that goes up against Ashland. This Horn and Cavanaugh combo is usually a recipe for disaster. But Sullivan's on a tirade right now. He has five strikeouts in two innings so far. He takes strike, Kavanaugh that is, takes strike one on a breaking pitch. After a quick conference with his team, Sullivan seems to be right back in it. Hornung is going and is going to be caught in a pickle. I think Ashland was looking for a balk yet again there. But Obed was cooking up a scheme, trying to get Farrell home. And Farrell was halfway down the third baseline, but the second baseman was, Gavin Tolan, was not giving him that lead taking run home. And Horning is going to try again, and he's going to steal second successfully this time. So two runners in scoring position with two outs for Ashland. And this is this is actually so interesting from Quincy. They are just willing to give these stolen bags up for the most part because they're so confident in their defense. I understand not wanting to make the possible overthrow and Farrell to score the leading run, but also it, it's... It shows a, an immense amount of confidence in your infield to give them those bases and in your pitcher also to be able to get the, uh, to end the inning without any damage done rather than relying on catching steals. One and one onto Kavanaugh here. Two on, two outs for Ashland. Two runners in scoring position as Kavanaugh takes strike two. Two and two. This is a huge at bat for Ashland. But Sullivan's looking for six strikeouts in two innings here. Can he get out of the jam, wind up in the pitch? Fouled away from Kavanaugh. Excuse me, the count is, no, still two and two. Scoreboard lied to me. Two and two on Kavanaugh, two outs. Two runners in scoring position for Ashland. 
Foul behind the backstop yet again. The battle continues between Kavanaugh and Sullivan. The pitcher's battle here. Kavanaugh trying to help his own cause. Wind up in the pitch. This is a blooper to shallow center field, and it's going to get down. Two runs are around to score as the center fielder mishandles the ball, and Ashland is going to take a 3-1 to one lead, plating two runs off of a two-RBI single for Dom Kavanaugh. And Coach Obed is jazzed right now. He had two of your fastest guys in scoring position. There was no way they weren't going to score off of that little blooper. Three to one, the lead for Ashland now, and that was the tiny little break that one of these teams needed to really pull ahead because there's just been so little in the way of base runners or scoring. And that's so rough if you're Brandon Sullivan as that hit, hit batter and Sam Farrell really turned the momentum in Ashland's favor a little bit. Combined with some good base running from Jackson Hornung. Really shifted the tide of this game a little bit. One and one onto Tyler Dossis, who is two for two on the day. He had two massive hits, an RBI single in the first, and a stand-up double in the fourth. Wind up in the pitch. In the dirt, gets away from the catcher, but he recovers. Kavanaugh will not advance to second. So rough for Brandon Sullivan as he was, as I said, looking to cap off six strikeouts in two innings. And really put this momentum away in terms of Quincy, but Dawson is going to answer back. Another huge hit for him on the night. Kavanaugh is going to be waved around. Is he going to score from first? The throw is cut off, and Kavanaugh's going to get there in time. A 4-1 to one lead for Ashland off of an RBI double for Tyler Dossis. His second RBI of the day, and this inning has just turned into disaster for Quincy, this bottom of the fifth. Got a feel for Brandon Sullivan right now. You also got to wonder where the leash is with him. He's still pitching a pretty good game, all things considered, but the momentum has just completely shifted by now. Kevin Balowitz to the plate. He's 0 for 2. If there's anybody Sullivan can get to put this inning away, it's Balowitz as he takes strike one. How about Kavanaugh scoring from first base, showing off the wheels on that? Three runs scored in the inning. A swinging strike from Balowitz, 0-2. Three runs of damage done by Ashland. Quincy going to get the chance to retaliate with one more strike from Brandon Sullivan. Wind up in the pitch, in the dirt. Dossis thought about taking off for third, but in, he's going to be held back at second. Good recovery from the catcher there. One and two on Balowitz. Tyler Dossis taking a healthy lead off second. Sullivan steps off the mound. Pitch to Balowitz. Swinging strike three, and that'll get him. Sullivan does get these six strikeouts in two innings, but with some asterisks involved as Ashland plates three runs in this bottom of the fifth. We're heading to the top of the sixth. Quincy going to get a chance to answer back, and we'll catch you there. Top of the sixth for Quincy here. Looking to answer back after Ashland plates three runs to make it a four to one game. But they only have th six outs to do so. Hey, 
This is off the heels of quite a performance pitching-wise from Brandon Sullivan as this is hit on the ground to the first baseman, fielded by Max Dishney and an easy step on the bag for out number one. Three unassisted, and that's going to bring up Liam Hines. Steve Parson goes down on the ground out there. Liam Hines over two on the day. Wind up in the pitch from Kavanaugh, who's still out there and going strong. Strike one. Swinging strike two. And Ashland with the momentum on their side now. Pretty cleanly. Looking to put this one away. Pitch from Kavanaugh hit on the ground to the shortstop, fielded by Dossis. Throw over to Dishney is good in time. Two outs. It's going to bring up Mike Dragon, who is one for two on the day with a hit in the fourth, but was caught stealing in a pickle after he reached first. Kavanaugh gets the sign and deals in the dirt for ball one. Pitch from Kavanaugh is hit to Donovan. Easy play to make, throw over to first is in time. Quincy's going down one, two, three, and it looks like we're going to have a new pitcher. We'll see you there in the bottom of the sixth. New pitcher out there for Quincy. We have Doug Concanon out there. Brandon Sullivan pitched five innings with eight strikeouts, walked one batter, hit one batter, gave up four runs, three of which were earned. And Concanon out there to see if he can... Bring a little momentum back Quincy's way. Ashland on the other hand, seven, eight, and nine do up. Shea Donovan at the plate. He walked in his last at bat, but is one for two on the day. And he fouls it away for a one and one count. Wind up in the pitch from Concanon. Outside for ball two. Different type of pitcher it looks like as Cannon looks like he has less gas, more breaking stuff. And this is hit on the ground to the shortstop. Throw over to first is in time for out number one. Nice play from Declan Joyce over at shortstop. He and Gavin Toland has been, have been the bright stars in the defense for Quincy tonight. It's going to bring up Max Dushney, who is 0 for 2 on the day. Takes ball one. Ashland, if you're just joining us, played a Three runs in the previous inning to go up four to one against Quincy. Swinging strike from Max Dushney, who's been a very reliable getting the start at first base tonight. He's done a fantastic job in the infield. Pitch from Concanon. Another swinging strike from Dushney. One out in the inning for Ashland. And the pitch from Concanon. Fouls that one away to stay alive. Ashland looking to see if they can add some insurance 
to their three-run lead as we head into the seventh. But Max Dushny instead strikes out, and that's going to bring up Nick Calabrese, who's had a rough day at the plate, going over two with two strikeouts. Very odd thing to see from Mr. On Base. As he statistically gets on base more than half the time he's at bat. The pitch from Kung Cannon is the bunt goes foul for strike number one. Two outs in the inning for Ashland. Kung Cannon with the wind up. This is hit right back to him and the shortstop could not make a play and a two out single for Nick Calabrese. This is what we're used to seeing from Calabrese and that's gonna bring up the top of the order in Mason Dushney, one for three on the day. And if you'll remember, the Ashland rally last inning was started with two outs and an unfortunate hit batter. This is hit in the air First base side high in the air. And it is dropped, it looks like. An error from the Quincy infield. Not something you see too often, especially with Tolman over at second base. He's been Mr. Consistent today. But because there was two outs on the inning, Calabrese is going to advance to third because he ran on contact. And Mason Dushney is going to reach on the error. It's going to bring up Sam Farrell, who is one for three on the day, but he reached on an error and was, like I said before, hit by pitch in the last inning to really start the rally as this is hit in the air, center field, ranging over and making the catch. A tough one to make, but without further damage done, Zach Hatfield is giving Quincy a chance to respond in this top of the seventh. We'll see you there on WACA TV in Ashland, HCAM in Hopkinton, and HCAT in Holliston. Kavanaugh out there to finish the game as he's in there for his seventh inning of work. Six, seven, eight, due up for Quincy. That's going to lead it off with Devin Desmond, the designated hitter. He's over two on the day with two strikeouts. He is not Kavanaugh's friend tonight. Final three outs for Quincy here. So they're down four to one after Ashland had a massive fifth inning, plating three in an otherwise relatively silent game in terms of base runners. Kavanaugh gets the sign and deals in there for a strike, two and one. The pitch from Kavanaugh, swinging strike, two and two. Quincy had all the momentum off of a brilliant pitching performance by Brandon Sullivan through the first five innings, even plating a run in the top of the fifth as that's fouled into the backstop. But Ashland responded with a vengeance, plating three runs in the bottom of that inning to add to their previous one run, making it a four to one lead. All it could be said coming off of the Hit batting of hit batter of Sam Farrell is this is another strikeout for Kavanaugh on the day. Devin Desmond gonna strike out and is thrown out easily by Hornum. One out in the inning is gonna bring up Declan Joyce, one for two on the day. Reached on a single back in the second, but was left on base. Pitch from Kavanaugh, 
There's gas, swinging strike. Kavanaugh's still got a lot in the tank, it looks like. Upstairs for a ball, one and one. Lined up in the pitch. This is foul behind the backstop, one and two. And that's in there for strike three. Down the middle, caught him looking for out number two. Quincy down to their final out. Gavin Toland to the plate. Two for two on the day, Toland is. Also probably been the, that will probably make him the player of the game because he's been stellar defensively today as well. Also scored the only run of the day for Quincy. And that's a stolen base. Down low for ball one. Kavanaugh up to seven strikeouts tonight. Outside for ball two. Um, didn't like that one. Pitch to Tolman. This is hit in the air, right field side. Calabrese ranging over to make the catch, and he will. That'll put an end to the game. Kavanaugh goes the full distance, and Ashland's going to take the win with a final score of 4-1. to one. We'll be right back for the post game. We'll see you then. That's going to bring an end to the first round of Final Four action here at Adams Field in Quincy. Ashland going to take the round one win over fourth seeded Quincy, four to one. And the player of the game for you tonight has to be Dom Kavanaugh as he went the full stretch on the mound with seven strikeouts, one hit batter, and one earned run, but also at the plate going two for three and scoring a run. But it was a group effort in the bottom of the fifth capped off by a Sam, or led off with a Sam Farrell hit by pitch. And Dom Cavanaugh got a hit. Uh, Jackson Hornung got a hit. And some crafty base running ensured the uh, three runs of insurance that Ashland needed to go on to win this. But Quincy definitely a force to be reckoned with off of the pitching performance of Brandon Sullivan, who went eight strikeouts, six innings, or five innings, excuse me. One hit batter, one walk. Four runs, three of which were earned. And Doug Concanon, the uh, Concanon, excuse me, the relief had one strikeout with no earned runs. Ashland again going to take this one four to one. We will see you back here in Quincy tomorrow for the second round of Final Four action. Ashland stays in the winners bracket, and the final scoreline for you: Ashland with eight hits. Zero errors and four runs. Quincy with six hits, two errors on one run for a final score for the final time of four to one. We'll catch you back here next time with Ashland Sevens Baseball on WACA TV, HCAM in Hopkinton, or HCAT in Holliston. For Tom Hamilton on camera, I'm Connor Donovan, and we'll see you next time.